billions of years ago, long before dinosaurs ruled the world, life began deep under the oceans. As microorganisms mixed with sunlight through the miracle of photosynthesis, oxygen was created. As the oxygen rose, it in turn was changed by ultraviolet light into ozone, high above the Earth's surface. The thin gauze of ozone would become the protecting tent under which life could flourish on the land. In a wondrous revolution, oxygen had created the very barrier which would allow life on Earth. A billion years later, the dinosaurs came and went, and ice covered the land as high as a hundred-story building. When the glaciers retreated, a new land was reclaimed from the ice, and in a wide stripe that encircled the top of the world, a forest grew. So we come to the efforts of the Canadian government to preserve this precious landscape. Parks and sanctuaries were created. In 1925, in Saskatchewan, a million acres of boreal wilderness, this northern forest, where the prairie gives way to the lake country, was given a new gift of life. Prince Albert National Park was born. The boreal forest is one of the largest terrestrial ecosystems on the entire face of the planet. And uh, most of the northern hemisphere is covered with boreal forest. It uh, covers more than a third of what Canada is uh, landmass. And of that area, we're just on the southern edge here in Prince Albert National Park. It's uh, an area typified by long, cold, cold winters and a very short growing season. And the forests that are a result of that are predominantly coniferous forests. There's a mixed forest as well, but the, the biggest proportion are coniferous trees like spruce, pine, and fir. And this tremendous volumes of gases being exchanged. It's like, well, something like the lungs of the earth. People like to make an awful lot about the importance of the, the rainforest, and, and certainly it is one of the organs of the earth, but the boreal forest is also one of the vital organs of the earth because of its immense size. What makes Prince Albert National Park so ideal to explore is that its southern boundary is right where Aspen Parkland gives way to boreal forest. The transition is exciting for researchers. From the air, the park is like a patchwork quilt sewn by a committee. Each square is determined not by the whim of the quilt maker, but by the kind of trees, their height and age, by the effects of climate and fire, the shape of the land, and the mosaic of soils left behind randomly by the retreating glaciers. For five white months, winter's frosty cloak covers the park, and you can imagine the land as it once was, a wilderness created by water in all its states. Some 500 million years ago, the sea swept in, laying down sediments of shales and limestones. Then glaciers crawled down from the north, chiseling out the face of the park, a dent here, a scar there. 25,000 years ago came the Wisconsinian, the last and greatest of these glaciers. And as it retreated, it ground all the rocks that had been deposited by earlier glaciers into a fine material. It's mostly a glacial till, a finely ground assemblage of sand and gravels that has been sorted by the the melt waters as they ran off the edge of the glaciers or as they plunged into crevasses and were deposited. So you have in the center of Prince Albert National Park a large set of hills, the Waskasu Hills, which are basically uh, glacial moraine. On the far side, the eastern side of the park, you have an even larger area where the glaciers sat in one place for a time. It's called a recessional moraine. It kind of piled up more hills, and we call those the Spruce River Highlands. The larger lakes are basically scoured out by the glaciers. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.